Story happening in KwaZulu Natal. There's demolitions of certain buildings in uh, the port city of Durban. What is this all about? Why are they demolishing buildings in Durban? Mlungisi Kumala is here to tell us more. Mlungisi, very good morning to you. What's the latest there? Uh, good morning to you, Blaine, and as well, uh, well, good morning to our viewers at home. Yes, like you mentioned, the Itzegoni municipality is going on a pro process whereby they are going to demolish a number of buildings within the CBD. And we also understand now that the C team has identified over 90 buildings which need to be rejuvenated. We understand some of these buildings have actually been housing some of the homeless people. And as a result of that, this has led to high figures of crime. But to tell me more about that, I've got the acting uh, mayor of the Etigoni municipality, uh, Mrs. Fozia Pierre. Thank you very much for your time, Mrs. Fozia Pierre. We understand that today you will be demolishing a number of buildings and you're on a process whereby you are going to rejuvenate some of the city's buildings. Why is that? Well, just to uh, start off by saying that uh, good afternoon to you. Um, we had launched a few months back uh, the inner city rejuvenation uh, plan and we are going to be starting um, uh, to spend at least 3.5 million um, in the CBD. So this is actually the process unfolds from that rejuvenation. We have more than 33 bad buildings here, really bad buildings and um, mainly on Mahatma Gandhi Street and we have identified three for today and one is going to be demolished soon just after this the reason being that these buildings have been really badly kept by property owners some of them have been invaded and they are not safe for anyone to be living in those buildings now the thing is this that um, the inner city regeneration is quite an in intensive program it's going to take time a uh, lot of money will be spent but at the end of the day we want to make the CBD so beautiful that the ethos of the city back to what it was years ago um, but we want property owners to come on board please you have left buildings for years unattended and we want you to come on board and with partnership let's work together to to bring this back to normal now we are also guided and um, by the you know constitutional human rights as well as the property law and legislation so we can't really do things without uh, getting permission from them but uh, on these two buildings we just decided uh, with the help of the constitutional court that we will have it drop down also um, the 33 buildings will take some time some will be refurbished and others will be uh, demolished and um, we will then uh, get the money out of the building owners if we find them and we also want to thank media because through the media we got the owners of one building and um, the, the owners must also realize that there are students living in some of these buildings in a really bad way. We are going to send fire department to ensure that the fires, the risks of fires are being checked much in advance. And this is a very, very aggressive action by the city. There is a, a, a definite no to any sorts of invasion in these properties. We have removed a large number of uh, um, bad stuff and feces and, and dirt all over. Also, I'm going to try to acquire a building for the homeless. We are in the process of identifying the building. Um, as uh, we we having that struggle of uh, court actions in some of them, they're lying in court. And as soon as that is cleared, I'm sure we will get one building for the homeless. So that, that alone will assist us as well. Acting Mayor, you've also mentioned that you cannot get some of the property owners and some of the building owners as well. How are you going to try and get hold of them? Because we now understand that you cannot get hold some of them. Would you demolish without their consent? Well, we may have to demolish without their consent, simply because now, um, you know, with, with legislation and with the court, uh, constitu constitutional court, we may just, um, it may just help us there. Yeah. 
Thank you very much for your time, May. Just one question, uh, Acting Mayor. We understand that uh, not so long ago you were thought to have been poisoned when you drank poison water. What's the latest so about that? And you also understand now that just yesterday uh, your PA also drank water and after that she was rushed to hospital. Well, um, my water was sent to uh, the municipality lab and apparently it's clear. I think in future when such things happen we may have to learn a better way of uh, how the water should be carried from, uh, from where the incident takes place, especially to call SAPS immediately. We're learning, we're learning from our mistakes. Um, as for my PA, I didn't get hold of her. Uh, I don't really know what happened because her phone is off. And um, I did get in touch with the uh, hospital and apparently she's uh, getting some x-rays done. And um, from what I heard from uh, some exco members were there and uh, which assisted her with paramedics and she was taken to a hospital. They found her on the floor and she whispered something like, please tell my mayor not to drink water from any of the bottles here. Are you of the view that somebody is still trying to poison you till this very day? Well, I'm not going to say that because there's some mockery on this as well. Um, as if life is so simple that one could just discard the very thought that a bottle that was opened and I took a gulp of water, which was definitely uh, a paraffin smell. I'm not the only one. There were four others that smelt the paraffin and the chief whoop immediately said to me, spit it out, but it was already gone down my throat. We do have doctor's report on my condition as well. So Deputy Mayor, the results came back negative. It said that there was nothing on the water, but, but, there is, but the tests were done internally. Do you trust the results? Well, I'm not going to say much about whether I trust the results, but I'm just going to put this on board that four people and even the speaker had, uh, um, um, you know, smelt the paraffin. So that says much. Are you deterred by all these threats? No, I'm not. In fact, I, I'm, I'm much stronger and I always believe the Almighty is here to protect us. Thank you very much. Uh, that's the acting mayor of the Itewini municipality just giving us a brief overview about what's happening today. She's mentioned that they've identified over 33 buildings within their Mahatma Gandhi precedent and they are now going to either re rejuvenate them or of course some of them they are going to demolish them. And we also understand plan that within the CBD, the city center of Durban, they've identified over 88 buildings and in those buildings of course they'll then have to make up uh, a decision whereby they'll be whereby they'll then decide whether they will rejuvenate them and of course or either they will demolish them. Now she also mentioned that some of the key role players within this whole uh, process have been property owners who are not coming into the party, who are not coming forward and, and working with the municipality. So she's basically saying that the municipality has been on an uh, aggressive campaign trying to get some of these building owners to come to them and work with them and where wrongs have been identified then they should also try and fix them. And we also understand that some of these buildings, some of these directed buildings have actually led to a worsening uh, crime statistics within uh, the Durban CB team. And we also understand then, that tourism in Durban in particular has rather taken a knock because of this. We understand that most tourists now, uh, according to recent studies, are now opting to go to Cape Town and no longer come here to the Banana City. And of course, these are some of the challenges uh, that the Etwini municipality would have to try and address. They will have to try and ensure that they bring tourists back uh, to the Devon CBD. And of course, earlier on, we had an interview with the mayor and asked her about the ongoing um, homeless number of people that we still have within the city. And she did mention that they have a program at hand and uh, the amount of money that they are going to spend in order to try and rejuvenate uh, the CBD of Durban is close to a billion rand. So those are some of the figures that have come true. And of course, in the end of our interview, we then interacted with the acting mayor and asked her about her recent uh, poisoning scandal. Of course, she did not say more about it, but she did say that she was not deterred and she will continue doing her work. We also understand that the results did come back negative, but the mayor is still very much optimistic 
think saying that she does not trust those results playing. Yeah, I appreciate you getting uh, an update with regards to this uh, alleged poisoning scandal. Um, Lou, just give us a sense. Uh, I assume that the, the building behind you is the one that's the actually coming down. But how so? Uh, the, you know, when, when a building comes down, it's normally a, a spectacular sight, an eye-catching uh, sight. But um, how are they going to go about doing it? Is it going to be via explosives or machinery? Okay, plane it's going to be via machinery. It's going to be by machinery. We understand that there was a tractor not so long ago. It's actually right here on my left hand side. And then after it will then go about and try and demolish the building next to me. But Blaine, just before I actually uh, give you more information about that, I've got a resident uh, from the Itsegwini municipality, somebody that lives within the CBD not so long ago. In fact, his life uh, was under threat when some of the migrants and some of the people that lived over here actually tried to kill him but he'll tell us more about that uh, thank you very much for his casa completely just yes we see in Konabanta bakcishe bakbulala ngenkathi udlula kulona leli bill icishela kabanzi yeah kusho ukuthi umfethe ulento yenzeke last weekend two weeks back eh la khona ikuseni ngahla around about eh ikuseni ngabo 8 eh ngangihamba ngiphikelela nginohambo oliya epotet what ngihamba nomvoid so Sasangana na bantu kuchoto abantu abafana ba bila lagos <laughs> ikrupe lago go go eight isakti na while ngang se phone ni ngese phone ni kuna mani phone and then ten getting zamu if sengre di call ngi fagi phone i lokuza ni phone ami pagetin then these people ba kamuga man grepa i lokuza na isanda ba ngi tatali phone and for the first times ngang chale for about twenty years ngang chale point ngang zeng tatali phone ngang kalugi bona le ando le an and number two ngi seven zengi poise. And the one two salo, who think Banjo goes on a lot of and the Gizam would get chased at the phone, Glomoto, and Lomota don't say Umeso, Omotum Kulunga. Then Mang him chaser and getting him chaser, Kamarabang and Mova, Babula Aba Pitama Bolle, Aba Pitama Bolle, the Bezagmin, and Bang Chaser, Mabin Chaser Bang Chesela, Abalega Bezagi on a lip building, Le Engala. Gibbon with Bazon Clarantella, Bafana Bang Bulal, Avela Abon with no escaping your funuses of my poison, then Bang and Agli Pilting, Mabin and Agli Pilting, and then Vasabe, Gulla Gwenny Pilting, Linga Pambi. So I are you happy that today the municipality is also bring down this building whereby some of the people that tried to kill you ran into? Well, first of all, I'm very happy, I'm very excited. I am very happy that 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 I am Letting out the Batala, a Yokuzanema Flatin, who are best banjun kunzi, a mean Nepsu was banjun kuns. So Sia Chabula Kul Masbo Numas Pala and Zalendo, and until the program Yabo in Gakubega, Ganja Longa be left building with Pella. Now my footama building and Salimuntu, now footba was Utiba attend. Thank you very much. This is just one of the residents here at uh, Devon CBD. Now in our interview, he did mention that uh, just a few days ago, some people tried to mug him, and as a result of that, uh, he had to run for his life, of course, and they also took his cell phone we understand plain and of course he also mentioned that in his interview as well he said he was very excited that the Etuani municipality was now making an effort to try and cleanse the dirt which has been going on here for quite some time and the big question is plain why has it taken the Etuani municipality such a long time to try and cleanse the city well during our interview um, acting mayor Forza Pierre did mention that some of the property owners have been the ones that have been delaying this whole entire entire uh, process now then we understand this unfortunately there will not be any explosives we are not going to see any dynamites but for now we've got a tractor on standby yeah. which is now going to assist to try and bring this building down right. now according to the spokesperson of the city Musami Selam, they said to us unfortunately the reason they cannot use uh, dynamites and explosives is because it is still uh, not safe for some of the other buildings which right. are in this area around as well and right. of course um, the, the landscape as well which which was a huge hurdle for them um, Lou, I, I just wanted to know if you could just ask uh, Nati, if you can give us a bit of a wide shot. I want to give our viewers a sense of what sort of buildings we're talking about here. The, the so-called bad buildings that the municipality is, uh, you know, has, has said that has to come down. 
Okay, I'm just now going to ask uh, the camera operator Natim Zimela to try and pan and show us the type of buildings that the municipality will actually bring down. Now, this is one of the buildings we understand that's over here. They identify that's over 150 homeless people used to live over here, and not so long ago, then some of them were here in the early hours of the morning, and they took some of their of some of their belongings. And now, when a police, when the police actually got here this morning they found out that some of the people that were actually stayed staying over here had some uh, uh, knives so so to speak so the municipality was extremely very excited by this project and they hope that when they go to other buildings as well they might try and discover the people that live over there and find out uh, what type of activities or illegal activities they are involved in now the mayor did mention that their fight is not against homeless people or the poor they just want to cleanse the city and they have a program whereby they are going to now shelter the homeless people and of course this is um, a growing problem throughout south africa playing all right, Nati and Mlu, we appreciate your work. Thank you very much indeed for your reporting. All right, that was basically the, these certain buildings that are coming down uh, in, uh, the, in Durban, the port city of Durban. And um, the municipality is saying in a statement that the owners of, they call it bad buildings, who have gone under the radar, neglecting them at uh, the expense of the municipality, uh, are want to come forward or risk losing their property. Okay, we'll try to catch up with them a little later on when those buildings actually come down. All right, uh, the other big story, the public memorial service for South African music legend Johnny Clegg will be held in Santa Johannesburg today. 66-year-old Clegg died.